Lights blinking, the numbers are moving sequentially. Um, looks like we're live. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here with me again. Um, my name is Verte Arbusto, and this is the Schumann Resonance Harmonics channel on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, it is uh, Friday, on the 2nd of October. It's um, the day after my birthday, or technically, this is the first day of my birth. I was born at 11.59 p.m. Um, so most of the day my mom was in labor, and so my first born day was on the second. But um, <clears throat> the doctor put my birthday on the first in, in honor of the fact of how much labor my mom was in for me, because I, I really didn't want to come out of the womb. It was, you know, and my sister Holly was was months months late. She was born for Christmas, Holly, and she came in February, around the time of my other sister Heather's birth, uh, birthday. Um, so anyway, so that's some family history. <clears throat> um, so uh, thank y'all for being here. I love the comments, and um, this is a channel. If you're new here, this is a channel for uh, hardcore Schumann resonance. Uh, facts and data and information. Um, part of my job is to correct misconceptions and misperceptions about the Schumann resonances. Um, but also, I like to listen to the comments from people, and <clears throat> excuse me, I ha uh, have read, like I said, also on the the um, the Facebook, this place YouTube and Facebook both. Um, in addition to other people's channels, um, uh, on comments on the, uh, the Schumann, um, and, um, I regularly, um, talk to people about, uh, uh, changing perceptions on the way they view things, but also, um, I, I, uh, uh, there, there are people who talk about the effects on themselves and on the animals, and they want to know more about uh, the physiological effects uh, of the hum of the human, um, and so not just what they are in, in themselves and and how to read the, the spectrogram and all that, but you know at what are electromagnetic rate you know electromagnetic waves electromagnetic radiation and how does it affect us uh what are the resonant frequencies of the harmonics of the schumann and how does that relate to our brain waves uh very common thing very wanted to know sought after uh um topic for people very common for people coming into this to want to know, and and to when they get introduced to it to pursue that, um, how do I say it? That 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 the subject matter, this 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 kind of life changing information of uh, you know being in sync with the natural world and the natural environment. Uh, I'll just say, and you know when you see the increase in the amplitude of the resonances, the frequencies of the resonances are not rising. You have 7.8, you know, 14.1, 20.9, around there, you know, these basic, and they fluctuate. And what you're seeing is an, in, is an increase in the amplitude, the height of the resonant frequencies, 
not a rising up of the frequencies. So, this important distinction is one of the mis misconceptions people have coming into this that um, has to be uh, changed. And you see right here, 7.83, that only goes up 0.5. That frequency only ever rises 0.5, right? What you're saying is stacking up of higher resonance harmonics, okay? So that's important to, to understand going into this going forward, all right? So I want to read to you more in this article because it is absolutely fascinating. It's a long article, and a lot of people may not have the time to um, read this, but you could put this on in the background as you see, you know, if you read this, uh, if you've seen the video once, you see that there's, you know, not many pictures. And so it's a lot of text. And so hopefully I can provide a service by reading through this, you know, kind of real technical stuff uh, to you. And so you have it playing in the background and you can benefit from this, you know, a few times reading, you know, because I've had to go through this a few times myself. And so me reading this helps me to um, get more of this information, you know, because I'm learning. I'm still learning. I, I, you know, I haven't gone through this, like I said, but a couple times, and this is a lot in this to digest. So I'm reading because I need to read this. I'm hoping that you will also benefit from this as well. All right. So now that seven minutes and three seconds into this, all right, let's um, uh, move on. And, all right. So... Um, peace and blessings to you all for being here. All right, so uh, on to the text. Um, the, uh, where I'm going to do is pick up a little bit. You know, it seemed fitting to pick up. This was approximately where I was. It seemed fitting to pick up here with, uh, you know, the picture I used uh, the, in the illustration, the thumbnail, which I thought is brilliant because it's, that's what the Schumann resonances are. And this is what we're here for. Um, and so... Uh, so I've read a little bit past this in the first video, and so, so it just seemed like, all right, so I'm going to pick off to kind of refresh the memory and to kind of, you know, get, get us all uh, in tune with, uh, you know, why we're here, uh, as it were. All right. Down a little. Come on. Come on. All right. Good. All right. <clears throat> Onward and upward. All right. So Koenig, who is... Um, uh, as you will recall, this is Schumann's predecessor and his protege, you know, former student. And then he took over for Schumann at the university. All right. So Koenig, this guy here, and his colleagues described the remarkable similarities of spectral power density profiles and patterns between the Earth ionospheric resonance and human brain wave activity, which also share magnitudes for both electric field and magnetic field components. Since then, the phenomena that brain rhythms may overlap and become synchronous with ultra-low frequency electromagnetic activity occurring within this resonant cavity has been observed and reiterated by other scientists. Those are references 8, 9, 10. To test direct synchrony uh, or synchrony between magnetic processes occurring in the Earth ionosphere cavity and the human brain, Saroka and Persinger measured simultaneously the human resonance and brain electrical activity of a single individual who was sitting quietly outside with eyes closed. 11. Results of the analysis indicated the presence of transient periods of harmonic synchrony that appeared when cross-channel coherence was computed between the uh, caudal root mean square signal derived from the brain and the extremely low frequency magnetic activity occurring in the proximal environment. These periods of harmonic synchrony lasted approximately 200 to 300 uh, microseconds or m seconds, uh, either miller or microseconds, 
and <clears throat> I think it's uh, micro, and uh, consisted of simultaneous coherence within the 7 to 8, and then the 13 to 14, and then the 19 to 20 hertz bands. Uh, and as you'll recall, those are the first three uh, resonant harmonics of the Schumann resonance. The coherence magnitudes were like those reported earlier by Pobachenko and colleagues, and that's reference 12. <clears throat> All right, we're back. we're back. I had to take some uh, have some coffee there and clear my throat. All right, thank you all for being here. All behaviors. Okay, so this is picking up new. All right, so all behaviors, including consciousness, are generated by and correlated with brain activity. The activity can be conceived as complex matrices of electromagnetic patterns and their associated chemical changes. Weak intensity, complex magnetic fields generated by the Earth and by human technology also uh, technology affect consciousness and experience. Sorry. The critical factor is not the intensity of the fields, but also patterns and the information contained within the patterns. Those patterns that are most like the natural temporal configures, configurations of brain activity are most effective. Michael Persinger. All right. Oh, no, that's right. Now I, rem I remember. So last time I went over and I showed um, pictures of uh, the... The patterns here, we're talking about from the Schumann, right? That's where it was last time. Right. So we're talking about, you know, these, and I'm going to refresh. All right, so this is brand new, spanking, spanking new. This is the brand newest Schumann right here. All right, so, you know, we have these patterns of the, the, the very low frequency here. Remember, this is zero and eight, our first resonant harmonic right here. So all of this... Right, so this is part of that, the patterns, you know, this is talking about also the patterns, pattern. All right, so, all right, so that's what he's talking about. But also con connecting those with brainwave activity. All right. Okay, so this is where we're brand new uh, as of this video. All right, 13 minutes into it. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Pardon me, excuse me, thank you. Biophysics now suggests that our biological systems are tuned into the background frequency of our planet via the Schumann resonances. Since this first discovery, more scientific research has posited that Schumann resonances are very Im important electromagnetic standing waves influencing biological oscillations within the mammalian brain. A living system has many similar resonant frequencies due to their degrees of freedom, where each can vibrate as a harmonic oscillator supporting the progression of vibrations as waves that move as a ripple within the whole system. All right, references 1415. Okay, hopefully you got that. I'm hanging on. The first five, <clears throat> excuse me, first five Schumann resonances overlap with the brain frequency bands or waves. Brain waves are grouped according to their frequencies and are labeled with Greek letters. Their most common frequencies include delta, theta, alpha, and beta. Okay, all right, thank God. So this is why we came here for this whole video. This is it. Uh, all the rest of it was all just hors d'oeuvres. All right, so delta, your delta waves are uh, 0.05 to 4 hertz. This brain rhythm occurs in a deep, dreamless sleep or unconsciousness. This is associated with drowsiness. Okay. Theta, 4 to 7 hertz. This brain rhythm is associated with drowsiness. Okay. 
way, I guess, along with the other. Uh, it also occurs at the first stage of sleep and during deep meditation, when we are awake but open to mental imagery. It has been associated with creativity, intuition, daydreaming, and fantasizing. It is believed to reflect activity from the limbic system and increased activity is observed in anxiety, behavioral activity, and inhibition. Okay. Uh, the alpha state is 7 to 12 hertz. This is the first, oh, this, uh, sorry, this is the major rhythm seen in a normal, relaxed adult. It is present during most of life. It is considered a common state during the alertness, but not actively processing information. Alpha has been linked to creativity. Creative people show alpha when listening and coming to a solution and mental work. Alpha activity is also associated bleh, with overall mental and body-mind coordination, calmness, alertness, and learning. Okay. Anything up? Beta. Yeah. Beta, 12 to 30 hertz, beta reflects highly active processing. It occurs during normal waking consciousness and outward attention. Slow beta, 12 to 17, is normal information processing and mental activity. Fast beta is 17 to 30, okay, is heightened awareness, uh, I'm sorry, heightened alertness, and flight or fight or anxiety. Okay, gamma is 30 to 100 hertz. That's a big jump. Okay, uh, the last one was seven. This is uh, 70. This is associated with waking states and can occur when we are simultaneously processing information in both brain hemispheres. Whales and dolphins also operate in these frequencies. Okay, then it says. Uh, resonance and entrainment. Okay. Two. Sorry. Sorry. Move them back. There we go. Resonance and entrainment. All right. Quantum physics has shown that everything in the universe vibrates and resonates with a unique frequency. Resonance occurs when a given system tuned to a certain frequency begins to oscillate or amplifies the presence of a preferential external frequency. Those frequencies that maximize or amplify a given object tuned to a specific frequency are called resonant frequencies. Together, two frequencies have the power to influence each other. If both are tuned in concordance for resonance, all right, simply put, one vibrational frequency can harmonize with another if, for example, you strike a tuning fork of 100 cycles per second and bring it near another tuning fork of that same frequency, the second tuning fork will be set in motion. <clears throat> I'm going to move here. Even though it has not been struck, the second fork will begin to vibrate and radiate a sound merely by being in the same field as the vibrating tuning fork. Like the tuning fork example, evidence shows it is possible for the brain to detect, or to, yeah, to detect, tune into, and respond to a Schumann resonance signal. For example, I'm sorry, another example of resonance is demonstrated when a singer breaks a glass by singing at a certain pitch. The frequency of that tone matches the natural frequency of the glass shattering it. Okay. All right. Entrainment is the process whereby two interacting oscillating systems, which have different periods when they function independently, assume a common period. The two oscillators may fall into synchrony, but other phase relationships are also possible. The system with the greater frequency slows down and the other speeds up. In other words, 
One vibrational frequency can tune the other, train it into harmony. It is more than plausible that humans and various earth life forms are tuned or resonate to these human vibrations of earth ionosphere cavity. Research in Russia has also confirmed this phenomena. Let me give uh, reference to 16 and 17. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alterations in the Schumann resonances. All right. Let's scoot this up. Schumann frequencies are, are um, I'm sorry, have wrapped life in Earth since its inception. Atmospheric electric discharges generate broadband electromagnetic waves that propagate between the surface and the ionosphere. These two, um, you know, just move my arm here. Right. These two layers develop the surface ionosphere cavity, which supports two types of electromagnetic modes. Uh, first is longitudinal modes correspond to global quasi-magnetic wave propagation around the globe, and II, transverse wave, transverse modes related to local quasi-vertical propagation between the surface and the ionosphere. All right, so I'm going to pause this and say, this is always what I tell you to remember when looking at the Schumann, that you have longitudinal waves that go around the world. Those are the true resonant harmonics. And then you have these transverse nodes bumping up and down related to local quasi-vertical propagation between the surface and the ionosphere. Okay? So, those white spikes, quote-unquote white mode spikes you see, those are the transverse modes that blast the Schumann machine, Schumann detector, locally, within the 50 kilometers, we'll say. All right. So, driven by lightning and affected by solar flares, these primal Schumann resonance pulses are thought to calibrate us and enhance our physical and mental well-being. That natural resonance helps us achieve our optimal brainwave states, but this atmosphere to human linkage has been recently disrupted by the electrosmog of much of today's technology. Several human move up here. Several human reaction time experiments have been conducted relative to Schumann resonances. Koenig showed that human reaction times were significantly correlated with the intensity of the eight to ten hertz Schumann signal. Ten ten hertz has been shown to speed up physiological reaction times, while 3 hertz signals from local thunderstorms have been shown to significantly lower reaction times. This phenomena can be demonstrated by changes in EEG patterns and calcium ion uptake in the brain. Sink in. Research carried out by E. Jacobi at the University of Düsseldorf, showed that the absence of Schumann waves creates a mental and physical health problems in the human body. Uh, 19. Followed up by this research, Professor R. Uh, Weaver from Max Planck Institute for Behavioral Physiology in Erling and Dex, Duck Ducks, began a study where he built an underground bunker that completely screened out magnetic fields. Okay. He, had a, he then had student volunteers live in the bunker for four weeks where they were hermetically sealed in this environment. Oh, my. Throughout the four weeks, Professor Weaver noted that the students' circadian rhythms diverged and that they suffered emotional distress and migraine headaches. Considering that they were young and healthy, no serious health conditions presented, which likely 
would not have been the case with older people or people with compromised immune systems. Weaver then added the Schumann frequency back into the environment, and the results were astonishing. After only a brief exposure to 7.8 hertz, the frequency which he had been screening out, the volunteer's health stabilized. And that's reference 20. That's interesting. Ooh. Thus, it seems that the extremely low frequencies, 3 to 30 hertz, and corresponding wavelengths of 100,000 to 10,000 kilometers, 100,000 to 10,000 kilometers, respectively, of the atmospheric electrical discharges operate as a stimulus for the human-animal brain electrical activity, and thus they constitute a very significant part of the animal's biological clock in order to the diurnal light-day cycle in the terrestrial environment. Thus, is in complete agreement with the Wet Weaver uh, 1979 experiments. Moreover, remarkable similarities of analog characteristics between spheric EMFs and axion, uh, axional action potentials in animal brain nerve cells have been reported. Um, so, m we're moving on to electrosmog's effect on human resonance and life on Earth. All right. Research within the last several decades demonstrates that alterations in geomagnetic activity from man-made electromagnetic technology, and it's electrosmog, have caused significant changes <clears throat> in the intensity and stability of the human resonances. Telecommunication technology operates within the Earth's ionospheric cavity, and these artificial signals can influence and even change the human resonance to flux outside its normal spectrum. This, in turn, can potentially induce alterations in the normal resonance with many Earth life forms particularly influencing brain waves and human physiological synchronization. Electrosmog exposure has been shown to cause many different physiological pathologies. So, oh, holy fuck. So they give you 21, 22, 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 31. All right. Or all appliances, uh, computers, TVs, cell phones, radios, digital devices, air conditioners, conditioners. Uh, lighting, po power lines, communication lines, airwaves, radio waves, etc., produce electromagnetic fields that can be disrupting to our own biofrequencies. These electromagnetic frequencies, either from above, interrupting our link with the Earth ionospheric resonance, or from direct exposure, can interfere with the body's electromagnetic operating system. In reference 32 they give. Thus, many scientists conclude that the Schumann resonance is already being altered by all the radio frequency, microwave, electrosmog, radiation, etc. humans are presently creating, and the implementation of 5G will alter it significantly more. In the process, whether or not it is raising the Schumann resonance frequency, 5G, may also be creating enough electropollution noise to be disconnecting humanity from accessing the Schumann resonance itself, thereby creating and or amplifying a variety of acute or chronic disease conditions. Research in the last 30 years shows that ELF electromagnetic fields affect the way calcium ions move in brain tissue and the way this affects the cell's inner workings. The more permeable the blood-brain barrier, which will happen with 5G, the greater the amount of toxins that can enter the brain. The 
opening of the blood-brain barrier in the calcium leakage is also associated with oxidative damage to neurons and can damage the DNA structure, 34, 33, and 34. All of this is already associated with electrosmog, dirty electricity, electrical pollution, and electrical hypersensitivity, which is seen in many patients. 5G frequency is connected to the 60 gigahertz millimeter wave band. Thus, 5G applications will require the unlocking of new spectrum bands in higher frequency ranges above 6G to 100 gigahertz and beyond. 5G is to start initially with sub 6 gigahertz moving as quickly into 6 gigahertz and above as the network advancement allows. This will allow the utilization of sub-millimeter and millimeter waves to allow ultra-high rates of data to be transmitted in the same amount of time as compared with previous deployments of RF and microwave radio frequency or microwave radiation. 5G represents a massive step up step t- step up from 3G at 1.8 to 2.5 gigahertz and 4G at 4 to 8 gigahertz placing it well within the microwave category and they give you references 35 and 37 oh my oh my This frequency is miles away from the natural resonance of 7.83 hertz that our body is accustomed to and far, far above current EMF levels, which are already damaging enough. At 60 gigahertz, the frequency may impair oxidation, as well as the body's ability to produce vitamin D and melanin. In this context, 5G and its 60 gigahertz delivery system are an assault on our bioregulatory systems. Yeah. NASA research on pulsating magnetic fields. NASA has had great interest in the Schumann resonance following the first space mission with astronauts. While several experiments were conducted on weightlessness, 39, Others were conducted on electromagnetic fields and their effect on cell cultures. Their EMF research and studies were outlined in a technical paper presented by Thomas J. Goodwin. I'm going to switch on.